Hello again, Pokey Peeps. Today's review is taking place in an area that's a little outside of the general area that I said I'll be doing my reviews. This review is taking place in Tyler State Park in PA. I've been to this park a handful of times and every time I really enjoy it. It has a lot of good scenery. As for a Pokemon, it's quite different from my local area back in like Northern Community Park, Vets Park in Hamilton. I have a theory on some Pokemon spawns that I think Tyler State Park is going to be helpful in proving. So that is partially why we're reviewing it. Let's go a hunting. We are starting a review of Tyler State Park at the disc golf course entrance. As you can see on the radar, we have four Eevees immediately. Tyler State Park is definitely a huge nest. And judging from getting out of the car, we I have an EV nest today. Coming up on the Anastasia Berman Memorial, we have a wild Woobat. Let's go ahead and capture that in the AR. You guys might hear that big waterfall in the background. Yeah, I'll get a picture of that waterfall with Woobat after I give it a capture. Alright, all right, we've made it to the Quarry Trail Gym. Wild spawns include two Eevees, three Eevees, a Geodude, a Mistrevis, and a Litleo. I'm playing during the Kento event, so we're going to be seeing a lot of first generation spawns today. But that Litleo and Mistrevis are definitely unaffected by that in our natural spawns. We've now made it over to the Fortuna Memorial Bench Pokey Spot. This is now more by the water and the spawns are kind of showing that. We have a Magikarp and a Chinchow. Let's catch that Chinchow. There we go. Man, we sure have been seeing chinchows everywhere there's water. I wonder how many chinchows we're going to see as the season changes. As of this recording, the season will change to the season of legendaries in like, let's see, four days. I wonder how many frillish we're going to start seeing in the wild. That's going to be really cool. All right, pretty bad chinchow going into the transfer. But now we're heading over in that direction where we're seeing more gyms and spots. A little further down the trail by the Merchant Memorial Bench, we have a Poliwag spawn. More water type spawns by this little river. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I always appreciate those water spawns, especially with Frillish on the way. Okay, as we're making our way to this big group of poker spots and a gym, of course, there's three Eevees, so yeah, definitely Eevee nest confirmed. As we look at the radar, though, the spawns are shifting from the usual things that we're used to to more like rock and ground types like Geodude and Swinub. And that's exactly why I am here. Let's get over there. All right, I've made it to the boathouse entrance, and Andrea has joined me. Hello. There we go. So what do you think we might find here today, Andrea? Geodudes. Yep, <laughs> she's all. Thing. Yep, she must have seen all the geodude on the way in here. We are about to go way uphill. Whoa. And that's pretty much why I'm here. I think elevation plays a role in Pokemon Go spawns. As we go up higher, I think we're about to see more rock, more fighting, and more ground type. Well, let's get to it. All right, pretty quickly after crossing the bridge, uh, we have a Geodude and more importantly, that fighting type Makuhita. Third gen not affected by the event right now. Uh, we also have a wild Joltik mixed in there, so that's pretty cool. Let's catch the Joltik. Oop, I hit the Eevee. Oop, there it is. <laughs> nice input. 
Look out, tiny bike. <laughs> cool. I don't know, he has a cool little pouch on his bike though. All right, I'm at 88 different species for that special. Cool. Uh, I'll hold on to that Joltik. All right, we're going to head toward that gym over there. The <laughs> Mill Dairy Trail Gym. Let's roll. Man, to that Dairy Hill Trail Gym, not too much out of the ordinary. Got a wild mischievous. That's pretty cool. And of course, another Eevee. Yep. Gonna be seeing Eevees all this trip. We're going up a steep incline. But we did get a wild Drillbird ground type. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it goes way, way up. Definitely think elevation plays a role in some spawns. Woo. <laughs> Hey, this is just the beginning, Andrea. We're gonna be, we're gonna be pretty winded. <laughs> Yay! Oh my, Justin must have gotten our heart while, while catching this drillbur. Maybe it went excited. Hello. There we go. Who we got an XL candy? Might be good for a uh, PVP. Oh, Justin's not excited yet. Getting there. All right, just passing the covered bridge trail. See a wild Trico. My incense has brought a wheel. Oh, now I see a horsey. And a snowpoke. Pretty first gen base because of the event. I've been seeing a lot of water types here though. Good number of water type spawns. Oh, and here we have a Taurus. Besides having these high elevations and uh, water, we do have some pretty open fields here. That could be why the Taurus is spawning. Let's AR capture the Taurus. Okay, well, not so great. As you can see, a big open field next to this Toro spawn. Definitely think they had an impact. But well, literally three steps ahead of the Toro spawn is a Bufalant. Toro's Bufalant, we've already shown in previous videos, like uh, Fenton Lane Park, that they love the flat area biomes. So yeah, I'm gonna say flat area over here. Look at this sick tree house. That is a really cool tree house. It's literally like a mini house in a tree. Now, what do you guys say about the cool tree house, Andrea? It's so perfect. <laughs> I want to go in. Nope. Thomas State Park actually has personal property on it, so everybody keep in mind that, yeah, people live here. Don't go on their property. Let's keep rolling. Oh, God, this is a pretty unusual spawn I wasn't expecting at all. Um, wild Swat. Pure poison type. I'm not sure what it's doing here. Nothing about this biome makes me think a wild swallow would spawn, but yeah, how unusual. Yeah. We're right by that little uh, tree house that I was just showing you. Is it possible that it's counting this house as like an urban spawn? How well, strange, but definitely cool to put in the review. I've only seen Wild Swallow a handful of times, and I haven't even been seeing Gulpin for a while. Huh. Weird. Oh, but it's a different species. That might be a PvP Swallow. Hang on to you. All right, we've made it up to the Covered Bridge Trail polka spot. Up here, I'm seeing Clefairy and Turtwig. I noticed quite a few Turtwig, and Clefairy, I believe, also might be affected by the elevation. You might remember back in the anime and even the video game, there was an area called Mount Moon where Clefairies often spawned. I think that's why they're affected by the elevations. 
Uh, the turtwigs, maybe being a turtle makes it a little more of a rough spawn, even though it's still a grass type. So it might be attracted to the, both the environments of like a higher elevation and forest, which is definitely what we're seeing here at Tyler State. All right, not too far away from, what was it? The covered bridge trail polka spot, a wild skarmory has appeared. Being a steel type and flying, I'm sure it's being attracted to these higher elevations. Me and Andrea had to do a little bit of off-roading to get over to the next path. But we've been rewarded with the third Litleo spawn. So Litleo seems to be attracted to this higher elevation spawn as well. Oh, oh there goes my grass. Well, bye Litleo. <laughs> Alright, trekking through some mud. We've made it to the forward covered bridge. Here I am seeing a tube of fairies, a whooper, and a swine up. So we got a mixture of like ground and the clefairies. I don't think fairy is attracted to higher elevations, but um, clefairy, I think, is. We're not gonna see like routes, but we'll see the clefairies. Man. <laughs> Oh yeah, and the two ground types. The ground type is definitely attracted to the higher elevation. But as for this gym, like it has a very cool location. This bridge is very cool to walk through. Just on the other side of the covered bridge, oh, it changed the part look cloudy. We have a wild lair on. Rock steel definitely attracted to the higher elevations. Just way, way uphill oh, from the covered bridge. Where, oh, oh. A little winded. Uh, um, spawn on the top of the hill is just a slack off. That's it. I need a chicken nugget. All right, just after you know our butts kicked by that incline, we're heading toward like a little horsey farm. See wild geo dude and a wild Zoltic. Oh, and there's a shelter. Woo! Huh. That's hard. <laughs> yep. Jellers are giving us a thousand dust on capture right now, so that's awesome. But that is our second Joltik. Um, maybe electric bug? Maybe Joltik likes higher elevations? Bugs typically forest, but electric? Hmm. Not sure on that one. Oh, and just a little further ahead is an Aaron. Rock steel. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of spawns going on here. The Hitmonlee is definitely part of first gen, but a lot of water types in the Snorlax? That's pretty sick. Just a little up ahead from Litleo number four, we have Makuhita number two. There's a Illumise as well, but Illumise is definitely forest, while Makuhita would be considered the higher elevation. Let's give it an AR capture. All right, we're at the Dairy Hill Trail Bridge, Bridge Dairy Hill Trail Gym. Uh, we are surrounded by the Nest Spawn Eevees. They're powered up in the partly cloudy weather. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five Eevees? Uh, other than that, Litleo and uh, Geodude. But yeah, wow. It's like, Taller State Park doesn't have like a gigantic amount of spawns. But like in certain areas like this, where there's a gym and a poke spot, is where they all just kind of cluster. All right, we're doing a little bit of off trailing again. They were kind of going into this hiking trail in between some farm fields, and what we have found were two Toro spawns. So yeah, like Tyler State, Tyler State Park is proving to have like multiple different biomes. So far, a pretty cool trip. Okay, we um, just did an Articuna raid together. We're able to duo it, so that was great. Just up ahead, uh, Geodude, Drillver spawn, and something I've never seen before, Wildcliff Fable. Just reinforcing that higher elevation spawn still. I really think that it is in like, not quite a biome, but maybe a biome attachment. Like this is foresty, but also, <clears throat> this is like a foresty kind of area, but it's also higher up. So we're getting all these stranger spawns that we might not be used to. Stranger danger. 
<laughs> A plus commentary. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> One shake, two shake, three shake, click. All right. What are you talking about over there? Oh, walk of fable though. That's really neat. We are back, Pokey Peeps. That was Tyler State Park. As you can see, it's a very big park. Lots of places to explore, lots of different Pokemon in the sea. Let's get to that review chart. So first off, the number of nests in Tyler State Park. Um, there's definitely the one big nest, which I think kind of even rivals Bet's Park's nest. We were seeing EV spawns consecutively throughout the trip. EV was very plentiful. It was everywhere as long as there was spawns around. I was hoping to maybe discover some pocket nests while we were here. I've been to Tyler State a couple of times and I've noticed pocket nests before possibly, but I can't confirm anything within this video. So I'm just gonna say Tyler State Park is one single nest. The biomes of Tyler State Park. So Tyler State Park is a lot of fun when it comes to the biomes because it's it seems to have nice little chunks of everything. Like as we first got out of the car at the disc golf course, we were discovering like foresty type spawns. We did get that Woobat like quickly. I wouldn't really count that as a forest spawn, but it was definitely natural. It wasn't affected by the current event. Other than that, we were finding what I'm calling higher elevation spawns. I believe elevation plays a critical role in Pokemon spawns when the elevation is high or low enough. I don't know if there's like a certain location I can explore for a lower elevation, but Tyler State has a lot of higher elevation areas. In the higher elevation spawns, we are finding a lot of like rock and fighting type. Geodude was proving to be plentiful there. Makuhita was showing up. Um, Joltik came by two or three times. Maybe the electric type is also affected by higher elevations. Well, I really think it's affected by the higher elevations is Clefairy. I don't see Clefairy too often back where I live in Central Jersey, but the higher elevations, I think Pokemon Go knows about like Mount Moon in the main series games and Clefairy being there. I mean, there was even the Clefable spawn. Now Clefables, I never seen in the wild even once. So I think Clefairy is like the hanging out in like higher spots. So besides higher elevation, there was also a couple of water spawns. Tyler State has this nice little watered area where a lot of people like to go and play in the water. There we were finding Chinchow, Magikarp, Poliwag. There was even some areas where there are big open flat fields and we were finding Tauros and we were finding Bufalant. So it really shows that there is a, this flatland biome because we are finding these flatland spawns in like Fenlane Park as well. The number of spawns in Tyler State Park. This is a weird one because there are areas of Tyler State Park where there's just nothing. There are like these big areas where you're walking down a trail and you're not finding too much. Maybe one or two spawns, but that's it. Meanwhile, you end up in an area with a gym and a polka spot and suddenly there's like 20 spawns. So... I would say Tyler State is plentiful in areas, but barren in others. So should you come to Tyler State Park with items ready? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Tyler State Park is huge, and in between the spots and gyms, there, it's just empty. So you're probably going to want to come with some Pokeballs ready. I would definitely come with like a hundred of at least Pokeball and Great Balls each just to be sure you're ready. There are polka spots and gyms there, but yeah, come with a few items just to be prepared. Tyler State Park isn't your casual go-to place for Pokemon Go players. If you are the type of player that just wants to hop out of the car and like do a lap somewhere, Tyler State Park isn't that. I would call Tyler State Park 
for adventures. If you want to go for an adventure for a day, Tyler State Park is your place to be. I know we covered a lot of ground in this review, but Tyler State Park is actually huge. There is more you could explore there. I wasn't able to cover everything, just like the biggest middle chunk where I thought some of the cooler spawns might be. So go to Tyler State Park with items prepared and you're ready for adventure. Definitely pack some water. There are some very steep hills, but it's a lot of fun. You're gonna find things that are different and I always love going there every other month or so. While I was at Tyler State Park, me and Andrea, duo then Articuna Ray, there is a video for that, so go check it out. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a subscription, a like, a comment. It lets me know that you're enjoying these reviews and you want to see some more. And don't be afraid to comment a local area that you think could use a review. I would love to go out and put on the list of places to go. There's lots of areas to see, more to explore. And as always, trainers, happy hunting.